For this project, we are going to be making a seascape with a fish. So the first thing you need you to do is get a blank sheet of paper and fold it hamburger style. So I had my paper wide and I took my left side and matched it up with my right side and creased down my fold. If you need help with this part, please ask your favorite adult. After you've made the fold and we have two even sides, I would like you to cut along the fold. Turn your papers horizontal so that they're wide. You should now have two pieces of paper. One is going to be our background and our seascape, which we will be working on today. And the second one is going to be our fish paper, which we will work on next week in the next video. So go ahead on one sheet of paper, write the word fish on the front at the top, kind of small, and you're going to put that off to the side. It's okay that it's on the front because we're going to cut out a fish smaller than the paper next time. What you're going to do now is make sure that your blank sheet of paper is landscape or horizontal, which means it's wider than it is tall. After that, about an inch away from the bottom of the page, you're going to do a wavy line that goes from the left to the right. Not too bumpy though, it should be more like rolling waves because this is our sand. We're drawing a seascape, which means we're going to draw sea life coming from the sea floor. We're not going to concentrate in the middle because our fish is going to be pasted there later. The first thing I'm going to do is a piece of seaweed near the edge, but not too close to the edge. See how I started below the sand line, did a wiggly line up, turned and came back down. If you would like to draw some seaweed, go ahead and do that now. Make sure that it grows out from the bottom where the sand is. Your seascape does not have to have the same things as my seascape. You could have just seaweed, you could have just coral, you can have just shells, but make sure that you're at least drawing your sand at the bottom. The next thing I'm doing is my version of coral. I'm gonna do two ovals kind of floating above the sand, kind of like the openings of the coral. Then from the sand, I'm gonna come up like a Y, go around the oval, come back down, and then go around the second oval. It's okay if this looks kind of bumpy and weird because, well, coral can be that way. I'm gonna draw some texture lines on it. And there's a piece of coral, the way I wanna draw it. But you could draw coral in different ways too. I'm gonna draw a shell over here, kind of like a top of a box with a rounded triangle on the bottom. I'm gonna draw some lines on it too to make it look textural. The next thing I'm going to do is a little sea star with five arms. And I'm gonna keep drawing little creatures on my sand. Once again, remembering that in the big middle space, there is going to be my fish pasted there later. So I might not wanna to draw too many things too close to the middle so that way they don't get covered up. Once you're done creating your seascape, we're going to start coloring it. Now, I'm gonna use crayons because later I wanna use some watercolor paint on top of it. After I'm done coloring, I am gonna show you how you can use watercolor paint or um, non-permanent markers to create a blue background. Make sure you color really hard. You can see that I did a hard outline and now I'm coloring kind of hard with a lighter color. So even if you don't think you'll be able to paint and you have crayons, use them. If you only have color pencils, that is okay. Try to color in so that there are no white spaces and 
Make sure you take your time, no matter what you're using. So make sure you color in all of your objects. See how I did outlines and then colored in with a different color and then color in your sand yellow. Pause here before we do the ocean. So I'm gonna show you three ways that you can fill in the rest of the ocean. I'm also going to do a few little bubbles with crayon by doing circles and white and yellow. You'll see how those work later if you're using crayon and markers or crayon with watercolor. Option one is to color. So if you are going to just color, my best suggestion would be to take a blue crayon, take the paper off and use the side of the crayon to color in the space all around. The second option is using washable markers with water. You need a plastic bag, a paper towel, and a little bit of water with your markers. It's also helpful to have a shallow dish to dip your paper towel into the water. So pause if you need to go get those things now. So what you're going to do is on the plastic bag, you're going to use blue or different kinds of blues, and you're going to color the bag with markers. These need to be washable markers, not Sharpies. You also might want to experiment the, doing this on a scrap piece of paper before you do it on the real one. So I'm going to spread marker out and just add a lot because I want it to spread a lot. And put it off to the side for a second. In my shallow dish, I'm going to pour a tiny bit of water. I don't want it too wet. And I'm going to take a paper towel, dip it into the water, and on the white part of my paper, I'm going to rub the water to make the paper a little bit wet. If you have a brush, you can brush some water onto the white part of your paper, but it's okay using a paper towel too. Then you're going to put the marker face down onto the wet paper and rub. You can move it a little bit if you need to get corners, but then when you bring it up, the marker has transferred over to the paper. You see those white circles? That's because I used white crayon and yellow crayon to make those circles. That is called wax resist. When you use watercolor paint on top of crayons, crayons are waxy, so they resist the color that's going on top of them. And that's why we can also still see our crayon kelp and all of our seashells and everything else. The third option is watercolor, or if you have temper paint, you can use watery tempera paint. You need water, your paints, and a brush. The keyword is water and watercolors. So make sure you take time to take your brush and drip water into your blue. Therefore activating the paint and you're really using that kind of blue watery puddle on top of your paint and not digging down into the kind of goopy paint itself. Just like the markers, when you paint in the white area and close to your crayon, the crayon will resist the paint and show through anything you're painting. So you can paint right on top of that kelp and that coral and the watercolor paint will beat up and run off of it so you can still see your crayon marks. If you can't see your crayon marks, try adding a little bit of just plain water by dipping your brush into your water and spreading out what's on your paper already. No matter how you get your blue, make sure that you clean up afterwards. If you use watercolors, make sure they dry before you move them around too much so they don't drip. That's the end of week one. If you're ready for week two, go to the next video. Please make sure your background does dry all the way before you do anything with it. And week two, we will be working on making a fish that we will later cut out and put onto our background to finish.